Hi, this is Ahmed Alokaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 244 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which three attempts were required to successfully recanalize a right coronary artery CTO. The patient was an elderly woman with an ejection fraction of 35% and exertional dyspnea and angina in the setting of a right coronary CTO. There was an attempt for recanalization that was unsuccessful at an outside hospital, even though there was successful crossing of a septal and retrograde advancement of a wire all the way to the proximal RCA. And this is uh, the cardiac CT that shows heavy calcification in the origin of the right coronary artery, which explains in large part the difficulties with recanalizing the CTO. This is the coronary angiogram. This is an occlusion at the ostium of the right coronary artery. There is a small uh, nub. There is a small uh, um, segment of the vessel. There is a conus branch that is patent. And then we have a retrograde filling through septal collaterals from the LAD. So this is an osteal occlusion. We have an occlusion length of about uh, 30 millimeters. The distal vessel seems to be of good quality, the distal RCA, and is filling through septal collaterals. There are also some epicardial collaterals. So given the previous failure, our plan was to try with a primary retrograde approach, and if that failed, try it with undergrade dissection and reentry. We tried to wire through the first septal, but unfortunately, the wire did not go into the PDA. It remained inside the septum. So we decided to try to cross through a more distal septal, we advanced the microcatheter and did surfing. But then we actually ended up having a perforation. And this is uh, something that can happen sometimes if we don't look at the septals in orthogonal projections. This actually was not a septal, but this was an epicardial collateral and our wire perforated this epicardial collateral. So we have this um, epicardial collateral perforation what we ended up doing is deploy a 2 millimeter by 2 centimeter axiom coil into that uh, branch and stop the case. In case of complication, it's always best to stop the case, let the patient recover, and then try again. So six weeks later, the patient comes back for a second attempt. We see the coil that was placed in this uh, epicardial branch. We did uh, first try to go undergrade. We used multiple guide wires, Gaia X2, Gaia X3, Confianza Pro 12, but we had a lot of difficulty penetrating, which comes to no surprise given the severe calcium based on CT. Also, interestingly, and geographically, the calcium is not quite as visible, showing the limitations of uh, fluoroscopy and angiography for detecting the presence of calcium. In any case, we were unable to penetrate through the proximal cap, so we decided to switch to the retrograde approach. This time, we were very careful to select the right collateral, but the wire kept on entering into a septal that was not connecting with the PDA. So after multiple attempts, what we ended up doing is uh, we left uh, one wire in place to mark where not to go, and then uh, we used uh, a dual lumen microcatheter, a Sasuke, to try to advance... Uh, the guide wire to the septal that is actually connecting. And then after advancing a microcatheter, we were actually able fairly easily to advance a SUO3 wire into the right posterior descending artery. The wire advanced essentially all the way back to the proximal RCA. And now we have the microcatheter literally at the ostium of the RCA, but we're having a a lot of difficulty with the retrograde wiring. We could not puncture into the aorta despite using multiple highly penetrating wires. We did the Carlino and actually that uh, caused staining into the right coronary cusp. So here clearly we needed to engage the RCA, but we did have a lot of difficulty with engagement. We tried several guides, AL1, AL.75, 3D right, the JR4, we had a lot of difficulty. Eventually, the hockey stick, this is an 8 French hockey stick guide, and this seemed to engage better and provide a little better support. We were also able to advance a guide wire into the conus branch, originating proximal to the proximal cap, and that was very useful, helping stabilize our guide catheter into the proximal RCA. 
Still a lot of difficulty advancing equipment. We did use a guide extension. Didn't work. We were able to advance a microcaster in, and we did uh, an injection of contrast through it, the Carlino technique. And then finally, we used the Gladius Mongo. Didn't work, but then we took a Filter XT guide wire, and uh, the Filter XT was getting stuck inside the proximal RCA. We did multiple attempts. Eventually, a knuckle formed, and now the knuckle seems to be moving along the course of the RCA. And now it's clear, of course, why we had all this difficulty. This is a very tortuous proximal right coronary artery, a lot of bands, and that was part of the difficulty advancing the wire. So here is the Filter XT, which is a fairly soft wire. It finally releases and goes along the course of the RCA. And of course, we need a contralateral orthogonal injection, and that suggests a good uh, movement of the wire alongside the retrograde guide wire. We were able to advance the guide extension a little further in using the inch warming technique. Balloon was inflated, uh, deflated, and then the guide extension was advanced which um, was uh, very useful for achieving the reverse car technique. And sometimes a lot of ballooning needs to be done in these heavily calcific vessels to be able to advance equipment. But again, here, clearly now, we're taking the band going to the meter shape. We were able to advance a retrograde wire after multiple attempts. This is a Gaia next 2 uh, inside the undergrade guide extension. And then we externalized an R350 wire. The proximal RCA lesion was balloon undilatable. So we did intravascular lithotripsy. But despite that, we still had some stand under expansion and um, ended up using the SIS open balloon up to 45 uh, atmospheres. The balloon uh, was placed over another wire, and that uh, was important because the balloon got stuck on the wire. We had to remove both at the same time. But then in the end, we got a nice result with Timothy flow into the right coronary artery. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that uh, one should always ascertain that a septal is indeed a septal and not an epicardial. In the first attempt we did at our institution, we advanced the wire into what appeared to be a septal but ended up being an epicardial and that caused a small perforation that required a coil for sealing. If a complication happens, in most cases, unless it is important for safety to continue, it is best to stop the case and bring the patient back and start fresh. When we did the second attempt, we knew that we had difficulty advancing equipment undergrade. We actually tried again but we failed. And then we had difficulty entering into the septal branch that was connecting. What ended up helping us here was using a dual lumen microcatheter and leaving a guide wire into what was not the appropriate septal as a marker of where not to go. We had an aortocoronary um, dissection when we did the retrograde Carlino technique. However, after we stand it, um, this was covered and there was a smaller dissection that's going to heal on itself. Dissections like this do not require any special treatment. However, one should be careful with injections, and that is why when we're injecting here, we're not injecting from the guide, but we're injecting through the guide extension that is way down the vessel. Persistence is key for being successful. And then when one uses the very high-pressure balloon, it can sometimes be stuck over the wire, and that is why it is best to, first of all, use a non-coded wire, such as the Grand Slam wire, and then uh, having a body wire, so if the OPN balloon gets stuck, one does not have to remove the wire, but can just pull it out and has another wire in place. Thank you.